Well, good morning, everybody. Great to have you along for our service again this morning. Not sure if uh, you noticed the anomaly last week uh, that uh, when I said we were up to our seventh, but we only had five written up on the board. Uh, so we've, we've made sure to replace that. I won't even go into the story as to how that happened. Uh, but great to have you along this morning. And uh, I thought I would read to you from the book of Exodus this morning. Moses has been up the mountain and has received the Ten Commandments and has come down to find the people have made for themselves a, a golden calf uh, through the chapters of uh, Exodus 20 through to 32. And now it's time, God says, it's time for you to move to the land that I have for you. And so in chapter 33 of the book of Exodus and verse 12, it says, One day Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, take these people up to the promised land. But you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me I know you by name and I look favourably on you. If it is true that you look favourably on me, let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favour. And remember that this nation is your very own people. And then it says in verse 14, The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, If you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favourably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? And then he says, For your presence among us Set your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. Presence, the very presence of God. Will you believe this morning that even in your lounge rooms or wherever you're watching this service from, that God would be present with you? It's a beautiful thing as we come together as God's people, as the church, and that will come again to know and experience God's presence with us. We spoke about enjoying God's presence last week. But this morning, I'll be praying that God would be present with us in all the various spots that we are, not forgetting that some of Jesus' last words to his disciples were, and lo, I will be with you always even to the very end of the age. Let's pray. God, how we need your presence. Would you this morning be present with us, wherever we are? Help us to know your comfort, your strength, your presence. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Well, good morning. It's great to be with you once again. Uh, here's uh, Eddie and Mandy Lee with us this morning, and uh, I'm going to ask them some questions about uh, Alpha. Uh, as a church, MUBC are hoping to begin Alpha again. Uh, I think August the 5th is the date that we're aiming to start our second lot of, of Alpha uh, film series and uh, really looking forward to, to doing that. So Eddie and Mandy have been actually doing a whole lot of stuff during isolation and so I'm going to ask you guys about that. So welcome, it's great to have Thanks. you guys with us, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, so tell us, what, what have you been doing over these last three, four months? Well, it's been, a, I guess, a typical time with Alpha. Um, we had to stop. Um, but our, I think our crew loved it so much that we had to keep going. Yeah. And we're still going. Uh, we had a, a small break, um, trying to figure out what the restrictions, what we can do, what we can't do. Mm. Um, yeah, so we're still at it. But you're still at it. How we're good is that? Yeah. So um, tell us, how many have you got in the group and how did the group come to be? Do you want me to? Yeah. Um, so we started the group when church started mm. and our heart originally, well it still is, was for our neighbours. So we drafted up a letter and invited all of our neighbours. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's and, brave. Um, Good job. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, we, we know them all. We live in a cul-de-sac so there's what, seven? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. seven like, and families and mm. things like that. So we handed all those out and we left it a few days or, or a couple of weeks and then we went back and... Um, very lovingly, he got rejected. <laughs> but it was still a great seed sown, and they know we care about them and we pray for them, and, yeah. and you know, so it's okay. It wasn't yeah. really a rejection, it was yeah. a seed. Mm. So then we thought, okay, well, how about different people we know and connect with in the community? So we asked many more, mm. probably about mm. 50 in, in wow. total, yeah. and two have faithfully come. And But it's not just them, it's um, one of the ladies bought mm. um, her boyfriend a few times and you know we got to know him and we love him and mm. and the other gentleman we got to know his dad better and so it's mm. not just about the numbers we don't care that it's only two it's it's great that it's two and it means a lot for those two definitely, yeah definitely. Mm. that's that's just fantastic mm. I think dad bumped into you at Woolies I, the, yeah, I, I see. yeah he loves it he loves that his son is coming along mm. and he yeah. loves, um, and I shared the gospel with him and said it was for him too, but um, mm. so he knows, but not at this time, he sure, said. So, sure. yeah. Mm. Wow, that's, it's a great, uh, it's such a, a great vehicle through mm. my mm. ministering to people, isn't mm. it? And uh, just, yeah, two people, what a great opportunity to just sow into them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, what are you hoping to do next? So, you, you've, you've done. How many of the, the sessions have you done and, and what are you hoping to move into from there? Well, I think we've, we've we're actually um, finished the Holy Spirit session and we're, we've got four, no, we've got five more to go. Okay. So we're nearly there. Yeah. yeah. So what we did yeah. was we did one to eight. Yeah. I think church had to stop at six yeah. due to COVID. Mm. Um, and then we stopped, but then we're doing and we we talk to the guys and they're really happy and wanting to do from 8 to 15 which is the whole lot wow yeah, yeah. so they just love it they come we have dinner we catch up from their week and um we watch the dvd and then we discuss it yeah and then we have a prayer little prayer for each of them and mm. over the weeks we see god moving and answering and mm. working in their mm. lives and mm. And it's real emotional support too, especially for one of the ladies. You know, mm. it's she's very busy and she's studying and everything, but just for that couple of hours, she can sit there and, and relax. really be ministered to and relax. Yeah. And, mm. yeah. That's great. and dessert, of course. Of course. And dessert. And as for what are we planning on doing now is um, finishing chicken. this. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a roast. Roast chook next Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Um, so we'll finish this. And um, yep. then we'll go back to our small group with other families from church, but also continue on with Alpha in our home for whoever would like to come along. Yeah, yeah. that's mm. great. Yeah. Fantastic. And that starts in about five weeks. Yes, yeah. it's not far away. No. no. 5th of August is not far yeah. away. Mm. So if you think that this might be something that you'd like to do or something that, uh, yeah, you'd like to invite some people to, mm. 
I uh, really encourage you to give Bernie a call, ring the church, um, mm -hmm. find out more. Uh, it's a, it's a, a great vehicle of being able to communicate the gospel clearly. So mm -hmm. thanks for joining us today. Well, we come to a time of prayer and I'd like to give you a few moments in the midst of this time of prayer just to quietly say your own prayers. I'll begin by reading just a couple of verses from a psalm by Moses. We started off uh, our service with uh, a reading from Exodus. And uh, Psalm 90 is a psalm that was written uh, by Moses as well. And it begins with these words. Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. That's amazing when you think about it. A house is different to a home, isn't it? A house is the structure, really, uh, whereas the home brings much more of the sense of family and, and people together and a place of safety. Through all the generations, you have been our home. And if Moses was able to say that back then, how much more are we able to say that today? Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from beginning to end, you are God. Let's begin by just adoring God for who he is. From beginning to end, as we think of time in a line that stretches to ever past and ever future, God is. And we can adore him in our prayer and thank him for who he is. Let's do that now. Why don't you spend a few moments just in silence thanking God for who he is? Lord God, we do adore you. We acknowledge this morning that before the mountains were even born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from beginning to end, you are God and we thank you. In the midst of times like we've been through, it's easy to, to think, woe is us, and to get a, a temporal view of, of life, to see ourselves in, in a sense in the here and now instead of thinking toward eternity and thanking God for all that he's done for us and in us and through us. As we go over to Ephesians, Paul begins the letter to the Ephesians with thankfulness for all the spiritual blessings that we've received. And here he says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Moses said back in... In Psalm 90, you've been our home throughout all the generations. And here Paul says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in his eyes. That's something to be thankful for in the midst of all that we've been going through. Uh, we can say thank you, God, for for choosing us, for blessing us, for reaching out to us. A little bit further on down in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear Son. 
He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. You may have things that you're thankful for in this season that God has been taking you through. But whether he's given you things and taken you through things that you're thankful for or not, here we're told as Christians we have so much to be thankful for. Let's spend a few moments in quiet and just lift those prayers of thanks up to God for the grace that he's shared with us in sending his son for Christ's sacrifice on the cross for the fact that we can know forgiveness and walk clean before our God, that he chose us before the world was even created. Let's thank him in our prayers. Lord God, we do thank you. And now I pray, Father, for those who grieve and continue to grieve over the loss of loved ones. We think of those within our own church, within our community and across our nation and world today. I pray now too, Father, for those who are unwell, who are recovering, those who are undergoing further treatment. And I name them, Father, those whom we know from our own church, for Bim and Connie, Stan Hoy, Norma Allison. We continue to pray for Bill Taplin, Bernie and Elaine Feeney. We lift up before you today Jan Grist, Mick Crawford, and others that we name in the silence. Father, would you be their presence, their peace, their healing, and their help. I pray too today for safe waters as they look for a place that can be rented and used for those who are sleeping rough. Even in our own town, Lord, we pray that you would be with uh, the board of safe waters, helping them as they now look for that place. And Father, I, begin, I finish uh, this morning in our prayer by asking that you would give us wisdom as sanctions are lifted, as freedoms are, are allowed in our country. I pray that you would grant the leadership of our church wisdom to know how to step forward into that. Lord, as we think of what needs to be changed, of what needs to be brought back and, and altered, in all of these things, Father, we need your mind, your leading. We thank you again, Father, for all that you are doing. And that we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Thanks for joining with us today. Wherever you're watching from, we're praying that today you'll know God's presence with you wherever you are and wherever you're up to with God in your life at the moment. This week has been a very difficult week for my family. It's the first time we've had all the family together since Christmas because of all the fires and the COVID-19 restrictions. And when we got all the family together, we had the sad decision to make about having to say goodbye to our little dog who we've had for 16 years. And he's been a very important part of our lives. And so within all that process, there was a lot of tears, uh, a lack of social distancing, but um, thanking God for memories we've shared and also looking forward to different parts of our future. And it's interesting to think of how someone who never said a word actually has made a big impact in our lives. And as we gathered around that little graveyard in the backyard, and as I walked away, I started thinking, I wonder what I would be remembered for at the end of my life. Will I have made a difference in someone's life? What is the um, thing that I would be remembered for when I go? And today we're talking about the topic of obedience, obedience to God. And that doesn't sound very attractive for a lot of people. And so if you're about to switch off, stay with us, because sometimes religion comes across as you must obey. And I know that for me, I never really liked that. Ever since I was young, I did not like that. I was um, a strong-willed child. Um, for those parents who know what I'm talking about, it meant that when my parents said now, I would say why? And when they said no, I would say yes. And even when I was in my 20s and I was um, involved or interested in a relationship that my parents didn't approve of, I remember going to my, my parents' place one time and my young nephew was there and he was uh, wanting to go in the pool and my dad said, no, you can't go in. And he said, well, what if I just um, sit on the ladder and put my feet in the water? And I said to my dad, you know what's going to happen next, don't you? And he said, yeah, just like someone else I know. And I went, ouch, I get the point. So obedience is something that has been a challenge for me. And I wanted to get you to have a think of how obedient are you when no one is watching? When no one is watching what you're looking at on that screen? When no one is um, watching what you do when the phone rings, when you're driving that car? Are you really obeying God in those relationships? In the way you use your money, in your giving to God, your, uh, even at tax time, those kind of things. It's so important that we have a right understanding of this because obedience to God is not just something that we do in order to get likes on God's Facebook, um, but really it's more of a sign of our thankfulness to, for what God has done. And I'm hoping you can hear the difference in that, hearing the difference in a thankfulness of what God has done for us. In the last few weeks, we've been looking at some building blocks of what it takes a person who has committed their life to following Jesus, how they can build on that in ways that will help them to grow in their faith. And we've looked at topics like saved and surrendered to Jesus and being spirit-filled and connected. And some of those things you might think, wow, that's just so many things again. But if we look at it in terms of love, which is what I want to encourage you with today, it can really help. If you've got your Bible there, have a look at John chapter 14 and look over at verse 15 and it looks at the why, the what and the how of obedience. And so I want to um, just show you some things about why we obey, what is obedience and how do I actually obey. And in John 14 in verse 15 it says, If you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask my Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. In verse 21 it says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. Can you see what Jesus is getting at there? 
Did you notice that the obedience that Jesus is looking at is really all about love? If you love him, you'll obey him. If you don't love him, you won't obey him. In verse 21, it says, I show my love for Jesus by obeying him. Even in the next chapter in John 15, verse 10, it says, When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey obey my father's commandments and remain in his love and so really if we want a close relationship with Jesus we should do what he says I guess that this might be a strange example but if I know that Michelle doesn't like it when I walk around in public with my holy socks on with sandals um, then because I love her I'll try not to do that I hope that makes some sense with this case, this is a three-for-one offer, or maybe it's a three-in-one offer. That in John 14, it says that if we love Jesus and obey what he commands, the Father gives us the Holy Spirit to be with us always. That's a pretty amazing offer. But he also says that he and the Father will also love us and make their home with us. And the third thing, in verse 21, he says he will re reveal more of himself to us. Now, how good is that? So if we want a greater revelation of what Jesus is really like in our lives, the key is to obey his commands. And when I was small, sometimes, and I didn't really like eating my dinner, my mother would say, you're not going to get your dessert until you've finished your first course. You might have heard that kind of bargain before. But think about it in the sense of, I wonder how God can lead us forward when we don't obey what he has already given us. And so when we look at obedience, think about a few examples. The sad story of Saul in Acts 26, 14, he is on his way to Damascus to arrest Christians and have them killed. On his way, he's blinded by a light. He falls to the ground and he hears a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me you're hurting yourself or it's hard for you to kick against the goads now the goads are like a pointed stick that was used for um, when an ox was plowing up the ground and they'd use it to kind of get them get the point um, and guide them into what they wanted to do and so when we resist obeying God in our lives we actually do hurt ourselves well the sad story of is the story in Exodus where an 11 day trip possibly took 40 years because of the people's disobedience. They kept going around that mountain or going around the wilderness for all those years. And yes, God's will was done. But the sad thing is, apart from two people, a whole generation died and didn't get to share in God's promise. And I don't know in your life if you feel like you've been going around the mountain or around the wilderness for a while. But Maybe in those times, and we wonder, why, is, why isn't God leading me at the moment? Maybe we need to look back at, was there something that I, I haven't done that God clearly told me to do? Again, we're not saying that we do good things in order to win God's approval, in order to be forgiven, but because we're forgiven, that's why we do those things. Because we're forgiven by all that Jesus has done for us on the cross, we show that in loving obedience. It's not religion, it's not duty, but it's thankful obedience. God wants loving children, not compliant slaves. For me, I find the story of the prodigal son or the lost son really sad when the older son says in Luke 15, 29, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. So he saw himself as a slave. King Saul made a huge sacrifice of animals to try to impress Samuel in 1 Kings 15, 22. And Samuel just says, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. God wants loving children, not compliant slaves. I guess you can see how this fits in with the other building blocks that we've been looking at this term. If I'm saved, if I'm surrendered to Jesus as leader of my life, out of love, I deny myself and obey what Jesus commands. But then the big question is, well, what does Jesus command? And in Matthew 22, 
The guy came up actually to test Jesus and he asked him, well, what is the most important commandment? And he says in verse 37, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. And so if you look at it, this is the Ten Commandments, but with love. Those commandments are actually out of the, the Old Testament as well. But if you look at it this way, um, when I show this to um, students at school, I say, if you look at these two parts of the Ten Commandments, as I grow in loving God, I actually fulfill the first four commandments, which relate to God. And as I grow in loving others, as I love myself, I will keep the second six of the commandment. If I love God, I won't worship other gods or idols or misuse God's name and I'll honour the Sabbath. If I love others, I'll respect parents, not murder, cheat on my partner or steal or lie or be envious of others. And the problem with that again, as I said, some people look at it as a kind of checklist and that's not the way that we get right with God because we've seen it through Jesus dying and rising again that we're forgiven. But there's also some other commandments of Jesus. One of them is to repent, that we need to turn around, we need to come back to God, that we need to believe that Jesus is from God. We need to deny ourselves and take up our cross. We talked about that the other week. We need to love one another. We need to love our enemies. We are also told to make disciples of all nations. And none of these are possible in our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit to empower us to be and to do all that he calls us to do. And so again, if you're looking at this list the same way as my students do and look down the list and think, yep, I've kept most of those, that's a pass, sweet, I'm in, you've missed the point. So following Jesus' commandments is not for those reasons, but it's because we are already in a love relationship with him that we do it out of our thankfulness. And so if you're trying to look at a, a verse that says, the difference between religion and obedience, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10 is a really good one to memorize really. It says God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done so none of us can boast about it for we're God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And so we don't get saved by doing good works, but verse 10 says because we are saved, we will do good works. So good works of obedience don't make me saved, but because I am saved, I do good works of obedience. I hope you can see the difference because that really confuses a lot of people. And so it makes a huge difference. If, um, for example, some would say, oh, well, uh, that, that means that I'm forgiven, etc. But the thing is that if I receive a gift, I can't say, well, oh, aren't I jolly good? No, all I can say is thanks. And so that should be my response when I know that it's a gift I've received. And I just want to say, if you're not sure about that, if you're not sure you're right with God today, then it's a really good opportunity for you. And I'm going to pray for you that you can come to know Jesus as a saviour in your life and know that you're forgiven. Not about what you do, doing more all the time. And so if, if that's something you want to do today, I want to encourage you. There's a, a phone number that we're putting at the bottom of the screen. And I want to encourage you to just give us a text and say, text us yes to Jesus. And we can send you some material and encourage you in, in your growth in that. And so if that's you, just stop the video now and, and send that text, yes to Jesus. And may God bless you as you make that step in obedience. And if you have already said yes to Jesus in your life, well, we've looked at why obey and then what, what to obey. And now I'd just like to give you some tips on how do I obey. So in today's reading, we started with if you love me, obey my commandments. So obviously the first step to obey Jesus is to love him in your life. But then the question comes, what do I do with that? And one of the questions we looked at the other week is, is Jesus the Lord or leader of my life? Or is he just one of my interests? Am I really surrendered to him? 
Or am I running my life my own way? Am I spending time alone with God in reading his word and, and praying? Am I using my time and my talents and treasures in a way that honours God? Am I connected in the sense of, am I actually involved in a local church where I can worship, it's a bit different at the moment, but where I can join with other people in praising God? And I'm also, am I involved with a small group of people where we can, we can share the scriptures, we can pray for one another and encourage each other? We need each other to grow in these things. That's why you need to be connected. And that's why we'll always be encouraging you to get involved in a connect group. And are you involved in actually making disciples and using whatever gifts and abilities you have to help others to get to know about Jesus in the world, wherever God is leading you to at the moment? And so Jesus promised that as we love him and obey him, he will love us and actually make his home in us by his spirit. And I want to ask a question of what would it look like if every one of us chose today to lovingly obey Jesus in all of our lives and actually seek to follow him at home, at work, in our community, and even when no one is watching. What would it look like if each of us was empowered in unity with God's people to be and do all that he's called us to be as his witnesses wherever he sends us? Have you ever thought of what you would be remembered for when you go? There was a story I heard the other week and it was the Alfred Nobel who started the Nobel Peace Prize. I don't know if you've heard of him but in 1888 the embarrassing thing happened where a man named Ludwig Nobel died but a journalist mistakenly thought it was Alfred Nobel and he published his obituary and the obituary described him as a man who cannot very easily Sorry, I'll just read this properly. It's a quote. It says, A man who cannot very easily pass for a benefactor of humanity died yesterday. It is Mr. Nobel, the inventor of dynamite. As Albert Nobel read his own obituary, he was shocked to see that he would be remembered for helping humankind destroy itself more efficiently. And so as he got towards the end of his life, he actually set up a fund where most of his money was given to give five awards a year for people who had contributed to humankind. And after he died, um, since 1901 I think it was, over 600 laureates have been given to encourage people in those endeavours. And if you ever thought about how will you be remembered? Would you be remembered as a person of peace or something else? Would you be remembered as a person who gave themselves fully to God? As someone who trusted and lovingly obeyed God and sought to make the world a better place in their own unique way? And so can I encourage you to say yes to Jesus in that way if you've never actually done that? And if you have, can I encourage you to commit yourself afresh today to respond to the one who lovingly says to us, if you love me, obey my commandments. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you know each one of us by name. You know the struggles that we have with obeying. You know the struggles we have with even trusting. And that there's been times when we've trusted and it just didn't work out the way you want. But I thank you that you love us so much that you gave Jesus to die for each one of us and to rise again so that we could have new life. And I pray for everyone listening here today that you'll help us to say yes to you. If it's the first time today, I pray for those people that they would turn away from their old way, even turn away from trying to live the way that they think they could, but actually to receive your forgiveness even to forgive themselves and receive your newness of life. And for those of us who have said yes to Jesus, help us from today to say, what does it mean for me to obey Jesus in my daily life when no one's watching, when everyone is watching, in who I am and what I do, in my attitudes and my actions. Lord, I pray that your will could be done in our lives. And I ask your blessing on each family, each individual, it's here today and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.